Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards, welcome to another edition of Westeros. Wheneverly. Wheneverly. This edition is going to be full of us talking with our mouths full, so I yep. hope you guys are ready for that. Because we are ready to bring the fanciness. Oh, yeah. That's, we're getting fancy tonight, dude. I'm not going to lie. This is legit. Is this not the best spread you've ever seen in your life? Well, well. I mean... I, I'm a Jew. I live on smorgasbords, <laughs> all right? I've seen some pretty fancy spreads, no. but... You guys have, like, horseradish and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know. You know I've never seen this bacon on a spread before. Yeah, that's so, true. We I have mean, two different kinds of bacony meats. We oh my literally God. have bacon, and we also have uh, wood-smoked prosciutto. So um, explain, explain to the audience why we have like, a beautiful plate, or two beautiful plates of charcuterie well, here. Well, Dave, today's episode is all about varis. Ooh. Our favorite spider, and it would be impossible to talk about Varys without not also talking about Illyrio Mopatis, the cheesemonger. The cheesemonger, yeah. which is why we are drinking wine. White wine. White wine. Chaz, all men Chaz, must drink. all men must drink. And pairing it nicely with our smorgasbord of cheeses and meats. Our cheesemonger charcuterie mm -hmm. boards. The that's meat's kind of a bonus because, I mean, we're not vegetarians and that's we have true. the lesbian meat master here. Yeah, that's true. So. And you don't keep kosher, so. Exactly. You know. So do you want to try to go over all the types of foods that we have on our charcuterie board? So we'll post a picture on the Facebook page, which apparently is just my Facebook page. Uh, yep. Can't afford designs. Uh, we have Ooh. a two different kinds of sharp cheddar cheese, a creamy cranberry Wensleydale cheese, which is very neutral. Um the wood smoked prosciutto, some perfectly ripe green grapes. Uh, our mascot is going to try to eat all of the cheese and meat off this plate. Mm. Susie is here uh, lurking around the plate. We also have dried cranberries, a little mini tangerine, uh, very, very fruity. Are these clementines? Is that what these are? No, uh. they're like miniature somethings. It, maybe it's a clementine. Kirsten gets them. They're some, they come in a sack and there's like, 40 of them in there. There's a lot of things that come in a sack, Ken. <laughs> That's not, I mean... Round shaped. You know, there potatoes is. come in a sack. We also... So that's the stuff that I brought over. We also have pine nuts. Um, and I think that covers it for my contributions to the evening story. So what I brought besides a pesky cat who's going to try to eat everything... The entire time. ...off our plate. Um, we've got ourselves some uh, Monterey Jack... Mm -hmm. Cubes. We've got some sharp cheddar. We've got some triscuits. Uh, garden, garden herb. herb. We got. Some, thank you. We've got yep. some uh, wheat thins. Wheat. Hint of salt. Wheat thins. Wheat hint of thin. salt. Um, we've got a little baby Swiss. Mm -hmm. We've got. I don't know what the hell that is, it's but like it's like a salami cheese roll up. It yeah, looks it's like a fruit roll up, but it's cheese and salami. It's all super together. fancy. Yeah, and um, just like we are today. Just like we are. In because fact, we have to get fancy to talk about Varys. He's a fancy motherfucker. He's a fancy motherfucker. And you know what? I'm, I think I'm gonna try to eat the whole time with my pinky out. With your pinky out. Yeah. You know? Um. Fun fact about Tana: Often I will be drinking with my pinky out, not because. I intend to, but because that's how I, like, naturally drink. Like, that's just my natural snobbishness coming out of here. So you're just naturally a pinky yeah. out snob. Yeah, huh? yeah, exactly. Okay. I just I all, I all, just always think I'm better than you. Hmm. So, yeah. That's okay. That's going to be happening tonight. And uh, we've got a, right we now we're doing a Pinot Grigio, which is nice. It's a neutral, okay. utterly drinkable, um, nice, crisp white. Confession, I always drink my white wine with ice in the glass. Unless I'm at like a fancy wine bar and I'm not allowed to have ice in my glass. And then it's usually super cold white wine anyway. So. Yeah, I like my white wine cold too. I just too. like it cold. You, you know what? I We've been over this before. I know, dude. I don't like hot drinks. I know. You know, I know. it's got to be cold and it's got to be delicious. Mm -hmm. And that's just, or, you know, have no flavor whatsoever like water. <laughs> and, you know. Well, I have a question for you, Dave. Bring it on. It's uh this is an episode of Stump Dave. Oh, it's we're starting a, Stump Dave. It's already. just one question though. Oh, just one question. How right. many names can you think of that Varys goes by in the book? Ooh, that's that's a really good question. And um, you, you're gonna get one point for every correct answer. There are a lot of names, and it's not names that he's chosen for himself necessarily, but you know, sort of overall. Okay. Okay. So see if you can think of something. So, well, obviously I'm going to start with uh, the spider. Yeah, spider, that's the one. Spider, that's one. Uh, we've got the Master of Whispers. 
Yeah, that's two. Uh, that's two. Um, I believe his official title is Spy Master. Uh, I don't know if that counts. That's the same. Well, that's... Spy Master, you know what? I'll give you a point for it. All right, sounds good. Three points. Uh, three points so far. Let's yeah. see. We've got Lord Varus, okay, right? Yeah. That's, well, I that's mean, his name. That's his we'll name. Go, that's allowed. So four uh, points. He goes as a character named Ruger. Ooh. Who is a uh, jailer. Bailer, jailer. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's the key holder. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Um. Let's see, what else does he go You as? actually are getting um, bonus points because I don't have all these written down in my notes. Uh, let's see, he's got five. the white, uh, what do they call him? Not what do they call him, but I know he's he controls the white birds or his little mice little or something birds, like that. Yeah. His little birds. Little birds and little mice, I have yeah. that on okay, there. Just okay, okay. Just sort of the connecting I'll thing. Take, I'll, take, I'll take any points I can get, you've you know? Also, uh, you've missed two of the big ones. Two of the big ones, huh? Yeah. Well, perfume Seneschal, I don't know if I would give mm. that that because okay, you're that jumping. could yeah. that could potentially be okay. a boat. We've talked about that yeah, briefly. Yeah, stinky steward. Yep. Um, I don't know. That's all I can really think the of. The spider. Did you even say? I spider? said the spider. That yeah, was the, the first, first one, one I said. What about the eunuch. Oh, the eunuch. Of yeah, course, that's, that's a one. that's an important so you one. Missed, you oh missed, man. This is how many you got. This is how many uh, you missed. The eunuch, the wizard. Or he, um, he's been called a wizard twice, um, once by Arya in game and once by Tyrion, I think, at the end of dance or in the middle of dance when he's talking with Illyrio. Anyway, wizard. And then a mummer. He's a mummer, he's but that's mummer. not really like, he's never called Varys the mummer. Yeah, I don't know if I'd count yeah. that. Yeah. So, great job, Dave. Hey. Yeah. I think this episode stump Dave was a failure. <laughs> all right, there was the no stumping. One, there was no stumping Dave, Dave. Not only did you get almost everything I had written down, but you also got a couple that I didn't even think of. The the apprentice is becoming the master. Now you know what it was. I uh, I was able to uh, actually do research this time. Oh. Beforehand, a little bit. A little. I took notes, but of course, as usual, left them at work. Yep, yep. Are and, they on the uh, cloud somewhere? Where they're you not on the them? cloud this time. No. <laughs> I almost left my house without my notes, and that would have been a tragedy. I, uh, I had a little downtime at work today, so I was scribbling, you know, things in my notebook. And, and uh, uh, so I have something I, that I think is going to be a little controversial. So ooh. I wondered, your, I wondered if maybe you would give dun, us dun dun dun. Um, Susie, come on now. This is going to be impossible. I know. We might Jesus. have to banish the cat. It's just too tempting. We have such a such a succulent plate, a charcuterie of uh, smoked meats and cheeses. How could a cat say no? You know? Yeah. Okay. Should I bring her out of the room and close the door? Let's give her another minute. She is our, our grumpy cat mascot and just see right. if maybe we can block her out. Okay. So... I have something a little bit controversial that maybe that I want to say about Varys and I wonder what you think of it. Okay? Okay. The internet will tell you without much searching that Varys is probably a lost Targaryen. Anybody listening to this podcast will bring them up to speed, but basically the general idea, would you agree, Dave, is that Varys shaves his head to hide his hair color because he's probably a Targaryen. I mean, he's always wearing deep, rich purples, which mm -hmm. is the Targaryen, you know, kind of like colors, royal yeah. colors. And, you know, you get this whole thing about how some random dude paid a shitload of money for yep. him yep. and then cut off his balls yep. and used it in a blood sacrifice, yep. in a blood magic sacrifice. Super fucked so, up. So, I mean, there's something special about mm -hmm. Varys. Yeah. I think I'm in agreement with the fact that he's a Targaryen. Yep. I mean, or you know, at least at least some relative of Blackfire or something. Have you personally read anything about the color of his eyes? I have not read anything about the color there, of his eyes. There are a couple of things. I was going through my books and my notes. God, it's so nice to have books where I don't have to like just click through my audiobook to mm. find the passages I'm looking for. I can actually go and read them. Oh, Ooh, that cranberry cheese is good. Isn't it nice? Yeah, it's really like good. a subtle, it's cranberry Wensleydale. Oh. Oh my god. And I wanted to name my next cat or dog Wensleydale because okay. I think it's appropriately nerdy for a name. Wensleydale. <laughs> it's just perfect. You said that with your pinky out, yes, by the exactly. way. Exactly. That's what a pinky out sound sounds like. Um, so you don't have to go very far through the internet to get this idea that Varys is a lost Targaryen of some kind. 
because of that blood sacrifice ritual, because we never see the color of his hair, because he has this weird fascination with Targir, with who's ruling the realm, right? Well, he has a severe, severe loyalty to the Targaryens. To, uh, to the realm, I well, would say. Well, he, he comments on the realms, but it seems to always be in favor of the Targaryens. I'm I mean, going to argue a different... Tack. I'm going to take a different approach here. So, he could be a princeling. He could be a bastard. We know him as a spider, a spy, a wizard. I want to suggest that as, as the reader delves into his backstory, it becomes clear that Varys is, has been very clear about his motives, that he believes in the realm. He does everything for peace, for the realm. And he is a protector of children. Why do we have like a horn sounding? Usually we have a train. No? I thought that was a train. That is a train. Oh. That's a different sound for a train. Is it? I think so. Yeah. Oh. So here's my idea. I think that Varys is a survivor. Or this here's is terrible. I can't stop eating. This I'm is sorry. That's good. This is... The, the idea that I want us to talk about is that I think Varys is brave. I think he is a survivor. Mm. I think he's been pretty upfront about what his motives are. Uh, he constantly says he wants peace. He wants the realm. Uh, he works for the realm. That's where his loyalty is. Uh, and he plays all these different parts. But I think in the end, he is protecting children and common folk. And ultimately, his goal is one of tranquility, of peace, and of security. And I want to see if I can prove that well, through our conversation, or at least move all right. us closer in that direction. I'd like to see you prove that, because yeah. I think I think it could be an interesting uh, take on it. I mean, the other half is that, you know, he's a thief. Yeah. And I mean, when he grew up, he grew up as a thief. Yeah, and, he and had some fucked up shit happen to him. However, what is interesting... Is that he was kind of a thief for the good guys. Yeah. Because, you know, while he was growing up, and yeah. him and Illyrio would uh, steal back from the thieves. Yep. Well, okay. Let's start here. All right. Let's start with a description of... I'm eating this last piece of bacon. Yeah, please do. All right. It's so good, right? I won't tell anyone that you're Jewish. Except I already told everyone. The first time Except that we everyone ever... on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> David... Don't tell my parents yeah. I'm eating bacon. <laughs> Actually, they don't care. But <laughs> Don't tell David's mom. Oh, David. Um, so the, the first time that we meet Varys in the story, okay, is in a Catelyn chapter. His reputation has preceded him. We already know that he's a master of whisperers. Ned has been talking about him around the kids. Like... You know who he is before we actually meet him, but when we meet him, and this is important, the first time the character is introduced to us, this is what is said. The man who stepped through the door was plump, perfumed, powdered, and as hairless as an egg. Now, who else did we meet Very in a very similar description to that? Hairless as an egg. In fact, his nickname, and we've just been talking about all of his stories, was Egg. That's right. Egg on. Targaryen. He's an egg that hatched. And so let us not forget, even though Game of Thrones came out 47 years ago, and so it's okay if you forget the language of it, this was in a Catelyn chapter. Not actually 47 years. No. I believe I read today 1997. Wow. Yeah, that sounds about right. I thought it was 98, but 97, 98. It was published in 97. Man, thank God I haven't been reading it from the very beginning and waiting 40,000 years in between books. I know, right? But Poor, poor George. I know. But anyway. His, he'll just keep on working and we'll just keep doing podcasts and talking about it and, and waiting for the next wonderful thing. Um, so, hairless is an egg, right? And uh, this theme of eggs or this egg imagery has been used over and over again with Targaryens. No. Uh, Varys shaves his head. Uh, and he says, or it is said of him, that he does this uh, because he's a mummer. He was trained as a mummer. And so we know from Arya being in mummer's troops and world building that that's a thing that they do is they shave their heads so their wigs fit better and so that their disguises fit better. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe he's also doing it for a similar reason. 
uh, because that was what identified him to the sorcerer a million years ago in Mir uh, and in Lice. And the other thing, so the rest of Vari's intro goes like this. Okay. And as hairless as an egg. The worst at it. He wore a vest of woven gold thread over a loose gown of purple silk. And on his feet were pointed slippers of soft velvet. Leg Scott, he said. I love that. Taking a hand in both of his. To see you again after so many years is such a joy. His flesh was soft and moist and his breath smelled of lilacs. I mean, we've got lilacs gold velvet you get this idea of like a you know he's plush words associated with him are often um slimy Tyrion describes him yeah. as very slimy a lot of the time that could also be a big mummer to make you think mm -hmm. he's more important than he is though yeah we also so that's where it begins and i wanted to take a second to just to to uh what is it called when you bracket something maybe it's bracket when you have something at the beginning and the end. A parenthesis? Or like bookend it. Bookend it. I don't uh. know what the word is that I'm looking for. But so that's our introduction to Varys, right? And then this is the very last thing that we hear about Varys. And this is where he is crystal clear about his motives. And so you and I are going to try to fill in the middle part. Okay. Okay? This is in the epilogue chapter of Dance with Dragons. He has just shot Kevin Lannister in the guts. With a crossbow. With a crossbow. Yeah. Uh, to sow the seeds of discontent and he's got all his little birds or his little mice the kids with the daggers so here's the here's the the passage <clears throat> i thought the crossbow fitting you shared so much with lord tywin why not that your niece will think the tyrells had you murdered mayhaps uh with the connivance of the imp the tyrells will suspect her someone will find a way to blame the dornishman doubt division and mistrust will eat the very ground beneath your boy king Whilst Aegon raises his banner above Storm's End, and uh -huh. the lords of the realm gather round him. Aegon, for a moment he did not understand. Then he remembered. A babe swaddled in crimson cloak, the cloth stained with his blood and brains. Dead. He's dead. No. The eunuch's voice sounded deeper. He is here. Aegon has been shaped for rule since before he could walk. He has been trained in arms as befits a knight to be, but that was not the end of his education. He reads and writes. He speaks several tongues. He has studied history and law and poetry. A septa has instructed him in the mysteries of the faith since he was old enough to understand them. He has lived with fisher folk, worked with his hands, swum in rivers and mended nets and learned to wash his own clothes at need. He can fish and cook and bind up a wound. He knows what it's like to be hungry, to be hunted, to be afraid. Tommen has been taught that kingship is his right. Aegon knows that kingship is his duty, that a king must put his people first and live and rule for them. So who else does that sound like who we know was kind of uh, put in place to be a king? Well, it sounds, I mean, there's a lot of similarities here for me with Daenerys. She always says that as a queen, she belongs to her people, except she doesn't have anybody shaping her in the way that Aegon has people shaping him. Big Griff, yeah. Varys, Illyrio. She got there all on her own, which I think sets up a really interesting dynamic between these two possible Targaryens. I mean... I just thought of a completely another theory yeah. that, you know, I think I'm just going to throw out there and, and go ahead and yell yeah, at me, make it. it crackpot. You know, I think Vars yeah. has been studying history. Absolutely. Okay? And I think that he is a huge fan of Egg. Of Aegon the, un the un Unlikely. Yeah, Aegon the Unlikely. Yep. Okay? Yep. And he's such a fan yep. that he realized that in order to be a really good king, you have to come from the people. Yeah. I wonder, but how would he know about... Well, we know that Aegon and Dunk visit the Free Cities at some point. Uh-huh. We've never seen that, but that was in the afterword or the final sentence that George added to the Night of the Seven Kings. So, but that so, would have been a hundred, hundred years before Varys was even born. Well, 
not a hundred years before he was born, but 80, yeah, maybe 80. eighty years, yeah. But you know, so what? There still could be recorded histories yeah. of adventures and lists and um, in any case, three cities. His his motives are pretty clear. Yeah. He wants a king that is for the that people. knows his duty, that knows what it's like to be afraid, to be hungry, to be hunted. All of the things that Varys himself was. So, how do you think he, that plays into his um, helping of Daenerys as well? Well, I kind of get the Maybe sense that's that, Daener- family, that Daenerys was... Loyalty? I think she was just sort of an afterthought for them. Like, I don't know that Daenerys... Because the focus for Illyrio, when we first meet him in game, was uh, on Viserys, on mm. the brother. Right. And Daenerys was just being sold to Khal Drogo. Uh, but then that changes. Illyrio actually, in the beginning of Dance, uh, has that conversation with Tyrion where they're in the palanquin. And it's such a beautiful, I think, of all the chapters in all of the A Song of Ice and Fire, that scene, this continuing scene with Illyrio and Tyrion mm-hmm. is one of my favorites. I think that it's operating on many different levels. The writing is poignant. It's also funny. Um, and he just manages to weave in all of this other stuff, like more imagery about an egg. Um, I would like to read you a little passage from a, actually, um... Would you like me to read? It's Daenerys. So you can eat some charcuteries? (laughs) Oh, it's Daenerys? Okay, you read. You should see our charcuterie, guys. We've been talking for, what, five minutes or something, and it's been decimated. We're doing a really good job. I think I've eaten 90% of it. I am such a fat (laughs) ass. It's ridiculous. No! You haven't. All men must drink. All men must drink. And eat cheese charcuteries. And eat charcuteries. Uh, We couldn't say charcuterie or Kirsten and I were joking around with one another one night. And so we started calling them shark tuteries. Shark tuteries. And then we've abbreviated it to shark toots. So is that uh, that what happens when a shark has to fart? Yep. A shark toot. A shark toot is a shark fart? The old underwater shark toot. Oh boy. Yep. Um, All right. Lay me on. So, Tyrion, this is page 74 of your Dance with Dragons book in the hardcover, which I'm in love with mine. <clears throat> uh, are you quite certain? So, he's talking about what, Illyrio, do you get in this? Like, why do you give a shit? The, the question that you and I have. Why does anybody, why do these guys give a shit about what happens in Westeros? He's rich, he's wealthy, so no. would Varys be. What's the big fucking deal? Are you quite certain that Daenerys will make good on her brother's promises? Asks Tyrion. She will, or she will not. Illyrio bit the egg in half. I told you, my little friend, not all that a man does is done for gain. Believe as you wish, but even old fat fools like me have friends and debts of affection to pay. So he's probably talking about Varys, right? And he loves Varys, or... Absolutely, no. Yeah. Um, uh, And then Tyrion is thinking, you know, uh, no, there's more to this than what you're saying. And he says, you meet so few men who value friendship over gold these days. Too true, the fat man said, deaf to the irony. How is it that the spider became so dear to you? We were young together, two green boys in Pentos. Varys came from Mir, says Tyrion. So he did. I met him not long after he arrived, one step ahead of the slavers. By day, he slept in the sewers, by night, he prowled the rooftops like a cat. I was near as poor, a bravo in soiled silks, living by my blade. Perhaps you chanced to glimpse that statue by my pool? Pytho Melanon carved it when I was six and ten. A lovely thing, though now I weep to see it. Age makes ruins of us all, and I am still in mourning for my nose, says Tyrion. But Varys. And he goes, in Mir, he was a prince of thieves until a rival thief informed on him. In Pentos, his accent marked him, and once he was known for a eunuch, he was despised and beaten. Why he chose to protect me, or why he chose me to protect him, I'll never know. But we came to an arrangement, and the arrangement is Vari spies on people. Yep. Right? Uh, He spied on lesser thieves and took their takings. Yeah, he quickly learned that information was worth more than gold. So he would spy on thieves, he'd see them take a woman's jewels... He would sneak into the thief slayer, or he would tell uh, Illyrio, let me say, hold on, let's get this straight. He spied on lesser thieves, took their takings. I offered my help to the victims, the old lady that got her jewels taken, promising to recover their valuables for a fee. 
Soon, every man who suffered a loss knew to come to me, while a city's footpads and cut purses sought out varies, half of them to slit his throat, the other half to sell them what they'd stolen. Yeah. We both grew rich and richer still when varies trained as mice. So he knew where all the jewels were, so he could go tell this tough kid, this Bravo, go beat up that guy. He has the old woman's jewels. Yep. They made a fortune. And after a while, the cut purses just started selling the jewels to Varys because it was a quick sale. Yep. And then they hire, so he's double dipping. He gets Absolutely. to hire Illyrio, the Bravo, to go take the jewels, you know, back. And they made a fortune. They could have just stopped there, Dave. They could have just stopped. They were both super wealthy, right? Uh, and it's after this, so, <clears throat> in, uh, let's see, it was, and richer still when Varys trained his mice. In King's Landing, says Tyrion, he kept little birds. Mice, we called them then. The older thieves were fools who thought no further than turning their night's plunder into white spider wine. <laughs> All men must drink. All men must drink. Let's see. Um... Let's see. Varys preferred orphan boys and young girls. He's saving kids. Yep. I mean, he's not, he's turning them into thieves, but now they have a job and they have responsibilities and they have power and he's going to teach them to read. Uh, he, he chose, read and write so he could, they could spy. Yep. He chose the smallest, the ones who were quick and quiet. He taught them to climb walls and slip down chimneys. He taught them to read as well. We left the gold and gems for common thieves. Instead, our mice stole letters, ledgers, charts. Later, they would read them and leave them where they lay. Secrets are worth more than silver or sapphires, Varys claimed. Just so, I grew so respectable that a cousin of the Prince of Pentos let me wed his maiden daughter, whilst whispers of a certain eunuch's talent, and this is how we get Varys from Pentos, where he's a wealthy man, Yep. to... Westeros, and it's during Danny's dad's reign, yeah. the Mad, Mad King. King. Yep, absolutely. He gets so paranoid that basically he says, "Get me that spy master. Yep. Get me that yep. amazing guy from the Free Cities." Yep. The eunuch's talents uh, reached across the narrow sea and reached the ears of a certain king, a very anxious king, who did not wholly trust his son Rhaegar, nor his wife, his sister, poor his poor fucking sister, <laughs> Rainies. What's her name? I think it's Rainies. Ugh. Um, Rayella? No, Rainey's. Maybe it's Rayella. Rainey's is the daughter. I think yeah. it's Rayella. It's Rayella. It's Rayella, you're right. Oh, poor fucking Rayella. I'm on fire. You are, man. You got this. You did your down. You did your research. I can't stop eating, though. <laughs> it's delicious. I need to stop eating. Uh, you can once I finish this passage, and then you can talk for a while. And All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nora's wife, Nora's hand. You know who his hand was. Um, well, actually, Aaron, he had a dozen hands. Aaron. Uh, John Aaron. He had Aaron. No, no, no. That's Robert. He oh, had a Tywin. Tyrion's dad, Tywin. Yeah, Tywin. He also had Rossart and oh. a bunch of the other guys. Helene, I he think. He stopped so. trusting them one by mm -hmm. one and basically said, get the fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Nor his hand, a friend of his youth who had grown arrogant and overproud. I do believe you know the rest of this tale. Is that not so? He asked Tyrion, <laughs> the son of that hand. It's so funny. So... So this is how Varys gets over to Mad King Aerys, and he, he sort of goes about unsettling the Mad King, right? Like he's, for every, there's a quote that I have where he's talking with Ned, every time, if there was ever, uh, like Aerys saw ghosts and, and, and uh, challenges around every corner and for any that he might have missed Varys was there to point them out uh, says whoever this chapter was I'm doing a bad job of sourcing it but that's okay you know the idea and so he's there to make a mad king even more suspicious and make it unstable why if it's all about Aegon right Aegon yeah, wasn't he doesn't, born yet yeah he doesn't know about Aegon yet he doesn't care at what point does the Aegon clan come into play? So Varys goes over so, to Mad King Aerys before there's a pretend king or baby Aegon, fake or otherwise, to put on the throne. I think at that point he tries to put... I think he helps put Robert Baratheon. Yeah. And you but know, because, why? Well, he, doesn't, he knows that Robert... Well, he doesn't know that Robert is a lout and... 
a woman beater and a drunkard. No, and, and he, a pro- king he probably at, that point. at he probably at that point just sees a way out of the mad Targaryen ruin that is that is happening to well, the realm. Okay. But but the question is, does he care about the realm at this point? You know, yeah. what there has to be something that triggers him to put him over the edge to say, well, maybe I should stay here. Yeah. Because well, you know. If someone kind of uh, just offers you a position somewhere, you don't automatically take it, yeah. right? There's got to be a reason for him to and, go and over there. And it seems like, you know, maybe... W- so the question... So here are some questions we're going to pose to the audience and to the listeners and that we'll reflect on in the days mm-hmm. and weeks to come. Did Varys cross the Narrow Sea with the intention, with some intention of what he was going to do? Or was he just moving to a new place to advance or not advance, to have a new adventure, to exact what control he could. Why does he cross the Narrow Sea? Because I think probably, so if he and Illyrio had a plan before he left, and that plan includes Aegon, that matters. If he leaves before a plan, that's the thing. Then it has to change in shape over time, right? Because it's got to be a very dangerous thing. I still can't understand what makes Varys leave his positions of power and wealth after such a harrowing and horrible life to go over to Westeros to serve under an insane man. It doesn't make sense. But, oh, if he's a Targaryen, and this is the only, like, this is his quote-unquote family, maybe he goes over to learn more about himself. How would he know? Do you think maybe that... Because, I mean... He had to have figured out this blood ritual was about king's blood or something. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been shaving his head for... uh, But longer than that, though. So Because he was being raised as a mummer, and that is a thing that mummers do. He was noticed by a guy in the crowd. Um, Oh, there's our train. That's what the train train sounds like. What was the thing earlier? Maybe it was a different train. They are apparently putting in a high-speed rail. High Are Speed they? Rail Florida is supposed to be over here. Oh, that'd I mean, be awesome. I wish I, I could mean, take a High Speed Rail to Boston. I mean, I don't think you can get on it here. You know, like, there's no train <laughs> At stop. At your house? Yeah, like... <laughs> I hear it. It's yeah. right there. Yeah, so every morning at 9 o'clock, it stops at my front door and that'd says, Get on get on board, Dave. We're going to Orlando. That no, I don't think that's the way it works. Um, but, yeah, so so bring it to me. A guy... Do you want... So, so sure, I'll, I'll read you it. Read yeah. this, read I'll this let you thing. nibble a little. Yeah. Uh, and so, here we go. Um... It's in the middle of Clash of Kings in the hardcover. It's page 485 and 486. Um, And this is going to be the story of Varys and how he got cut. Now, before this, Tyrion had asked earlier in game or earlier in Clash that he... Who are you, Varys? Who are you truly? Right? Isn't that great? Yeah, this is really nice. The paper's really nice, too. I know. Oh, my God. And they just keep getting better. The Dance with Dragons one has a slightly smaller font, and the pages feel a little bit thinner, but it's so meaty anyway. So I this, love it. this is a Who chapter? Whose perspective is this, this now? This is a Tyrion, a Tyrion chapter. chapter. A lot okay. of what we learn about Varys is, is given to us in Tyrion chapters. Okay. And I think... Oh, I have another question, which is going to be... We'll talk about it in a bit. Does Illyrio know about Tyrion's birth? Does he know that he's possibly Ares Targaryen's Bastard. rape baby? Yeah. yeah, rape baby. So be pondering that, but read us this. God, doesn't that sound so terrible? It's awful. It's such a rape baby. <laughs> it's like the new insult of the generation. No, I'm squashing it right God. now. God. I best not hear any of our listeners you're call the... anyone a rape baby. <laughs> Imagine um, the kids at school be like, oh yeah, well you're a rape you're baby. You're such a rape baby. Oh my God. So being such a rape baby. Boob punch is my boob, favorite insult. Boob punch? Boob. Don't be such a boob punch. It's oh. from Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. Oh, okay. Yep. I like saying you're the load your mother should have swallowed. Oh, no, uh, Dave, no. Sorry. Oh, uh, no. Stop being such a rape baby, Dave. <laughs> God. Uh. Boob punch. Boob punch. Sorry, boob such punch. such a boob punch. Okay, so 486, 486. Uh, Clash of Kings, yep. Tyrion chapter. Yep. Vars start, comes clean. We're going to start with uh, Tyrion, or actually uh, Vars yep. himself. Doubtless you are right, my lord. His smug tone said otherwise. But you do not think so. How was it done then? For a long moment, Varys said nothing. The only sound was the stately clack of the horseshoes on cobbles. Finally, the eunuch cleared his throat. <clears> throat> My lord, do you believe in the old powers? 
Magic, you mean? Tyrion said impatiently. Blood spells, curses, shape-shifting, those sort of things? He snorted. Do you mean to suggest that Sir Courtney was magic They're talking death? about Sir Courtney Penrose, uh, Melisandre's shadow baby that Davos just rode under Storm's End was released, and Sir Courtney Penrose, who is so holding Storm's End against Stannis, then leaps to his death. Sir Courtney had challenged Lord Stannis to single combat on the morning he died. I ask you, is the act of a man lost to despair? Then there is the matter of Lord Renly's mysterious and most fortuitous mm -hmm. murder. Yep. Even as his battle lines were forming up to sweep his brother from the field. Mm -hmm. The eunuch paused a moment. My lord, you once asked me how it was that I was cut. I recall, said Tyrion, you did not want to talk of it. Nor do I. Nor do I, but... This pause was longer than the one before, and when Varys spoke again, his voice was different somehow. I was an orphan boy, apprenticed to a traveling folly. Our master owned a fat little cog, and we sailed up and down the narrow sea, performing in all the free cities, and from time to time in Old Town in King's Landing. Oh, so, so he's, been to, King's he's Landing. been to King's Landing before. Okay. All right, that's important, I think. Okay, but he would have been Arya's age or younger, Arya True. or Bran at True. the time. One day at Mir, a certain man came up to our folly after the performance. He made an offer for me that my master found too tempting to refuse. I was in terror. I feared the man meant to use me as I had heard men use small boys, but in truth, the only part of me he had need of was my manhood. He gave a portion, he gave yeah. me a potion that so made me terrible. powerless to move or speak, yet did nothing to dull my senses. Isn't that fucked up? That's fucked up. I Isn't mean, that fucked up? if that's not the date rape drug, drug Except I don't know what is. Except you sit insensate that dulls none of your senses and feel this guy cut you off, root and stem. Mm -hmm. Keep going. It's horrible. This kid had horrible stuff done to him. I feel for Varys, man. With a long hooked blade, he sliced me root and stem. Does it say what kind of metal it is? No, it doesn't. It just, just says like long, long, hooked blade. long hooked blade. You're, okay. you're thinking it could be Valerian steel I'm of some sort. I'm wondering if there are if there are any similarities we can find between the blood magic spells. Like, uh, Miramar's Door does that one with Khal Drogo, and then we've got Melisandre. She does, like, the leeches. Are there any others that you can think of? Uh, blood well, magic. Well, Blood Raven, but... Does he do blood magic, though? We see well, a couple people be sacrificed to heart trees, and, like, yeah, Bran can taste it, but that doesn't There's some blood like magic the in the uh, in the Game of Thrones game, Telltale Games. Yeah? Yeah, there's a little blood magic in there. <laughs> I see you wearing your inside sunglasses <laughs> that say Telltale Games Telltale on them. Games on them, yep, of course, uh-huh. And your t-shirt and your new Telltale Games. <laughs> Stop telling everyone what I'm wearing. <laughs> then they won't want to call me for phone sex later. <laughs> God. What are you wearing? Uh, My Telltale khakis? Games shirt. <laughs> khakis? That sounds hideous. Jacob, Jacob State, State Farm. Farm. <laughs> <laughs> I love our podcast. Oh my god. Please it's, continue. It's so good. With a long hooked blade, he sliced me root and stem, chanting all the while. I watched him burn my manly parts on a brazier. The Ugh. flames turned blue, and I heard a voice answer Ugh. his call, though I did not understand the words they spoke. Yeah, is what this, the fuck is this? Is this a is this a red relor? That's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Is it relor? Is it speaking in a different language? Is it just that uh, Miramar's door does that ululation thing? Ululation? Yeah. Um, which is a chanting, and she's like, you can see the shadows in the tent with Khal Drogo, and no living man must come in. But, like, yeah. there were no shadows dancing here that I remember. No, but it just says, the spoke. yeah, the flames turn blue, and I heard a voice answer his call. So he was chanting blue. to someone. Blue is the like, warlock color. yeah, the warlock color. But not exclusively, but it is a warlock color, so it's not red. That's important. Yeah, I think red relore might that's be red. also very important. Much like your underlining, it's blue. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Now that I have my own books, I can underline to my heart's content. Do we continue? Yes, I guess please. so. The murmurs had sailed by the time he was done with me. Once I had served his purpose, the man had no further interest in me, so he put me out. When I asked him what I should do now, he answered that he supposed I should die fucking asshole to su to spite him i resolved to live good I for you beg, 
I stole and I sold what parts of my body still remained to me. This poor fucking kid. Soon I was as good as a thief as any in mirror. And when I was older, I learned that often the contents of a man's letters are more valuable than the contents of his purse. Yep. Yet I still dream of that night, my lord, not of the sorcerer, nor his blade, nor even the way my manhood shriveled as it burned. This is hor- This is horrific shit. I dreamed of the voice. The voice from the flames. It was a g- god, a demon, some conjurer's trick, I could not tell you. And I know all the tricks. Yeah. All I say for certainty is that he called it and it answered. What the fuck? And since that day, I have hated magic and all those who practice it. If Lord Stannis is one such, I mean to see him dead. I mean, that is some fucked up shit. And a lot of what he says gets confirmed by, you know, he could be lying to Tyrion, but I take him at his word. I think this is a hard conversation for Varys to have. I think he's really feeling this magic bullshit bone deep. And I think I think there's a lot of truth in here, and it and it matches up with the stuff Illyrio said. So let me ask you this question. A voice. He doesn't even have nightmares about the sorcerer that did it to him. He has nightmares about the voice. That's huge. So, he hates magic. Yeah, but he knows all the conjurer's tricks. Yes, but he's a Targaryen. Yeah. And he's, you know... He probably put it together. He's a clever kid. He put it together that the reason that this that this stranger paid a, whatever, uh, made an offer his master couldn't refuse. refuse. We don't know what that offer was. I'm right. assuming it's an exorbitant amount of money, but who knows what it was. Yeah. Um... And he gives him this kid, and then they leave the kid to die. There must have been a tell. There must have been a reason. What color are Varys' eyes? What color is his hair? But if he's... It had to be a physical tell. If he hates magic, wouldn't he hate dragons? By proxy? No. I mean... If it's his blood... Maybe not. If it's his blood that caused him so much suffering, and he has resolved to survive, and he is a survivor of this horrific atrocious violence against him and maybe he's just turned a corner done a 180 and this is he's decided that if my blood is the power i'm gonna control this i'm gonna put somebody with my blood essentially who could have been me right Aegon, as a baby was supposed to have his head smashed in a wall if vari saves baby Aegon targaryen the real baby which maybe he did and spirits him away and raises him as a king then that's a serious fuck you to the guy, to the sorcerer, and the people that abandoned Varys. So, to my knowledge, this is the only time we hear this story. It's the only time. And it's the only time... And it time... took me fucking forever to find it, I'll have you know. <laughs> there are so many Tyrion chapters. Oh, it took me forever. So, do you think we'll ever find out what that conjurer's blood magic spell was that about? That was my question. You know? I wonder, like, what spell was this guy sending off into the world that he needed king's blood? And this much, it was like root and stem, I guess. From what I can extrapolate in the stories, a eunuch is a eunuch. They'll leave the rod, but take the tackle. So, you don't have to cut the whole thing off. But this guy did, and then did fire magic ceremony, but with blue fire. I don't know. Well, man. it turned blue once he God, threw the so fucked up. demand parts. And I mean, and how violent and why, and why that, it doesn't dull, parts, yeah. that it doesn't dull any of his senses. You know. It's his blood, his seed, but he, I don't know. And I mean. King's blood. Yeah, King's blood, but you know, you don't see uh, Melisandre chopping off mm-hmm. Stannis's, you know, Right, but she penis. does. But the idea with the shadow babies is that. Or at least the sense that I got she is that they them. fuck. Yeah. And then she takes his, like, life energy. Yeah. And turns it into a shadow baby. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, so it's that's a different clear, way. That's 100% clear to me. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that's... I don't know. I don't know, man. But so... Uh, so, what the fuck? I think Varys is a survivor, and I think that he ca- he really cares about kids. I think that's why he employs kids. Yeah, they're useful for him, but he's going around saving the small folk. At some point, he says, uh, the people that truly pay the price when you great lords play your Game of Thrones are the common people, the innocents. Yeah. Um, you know, I wrote down some questions. 
The first one was, what was that voice that we've already heard? What do you think it was? My guess I is think Red Relore. Relore. Yeah, I think Relore. I mean, especially with all, everything we know about fire yeah. and the, the Red Priest yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. I think that this guy was a Red Priest. Yeah. I think so. I, well, if he was, maybe he would have had some face tattoos that Varys might have remembered and didn't talk about. Like, there are some things that are well, missing. Well, you know, he's, he says... I don't think we're supposed to know. Like, no, that's I, the other thing. I agree. And I think, you know, the thing Varys says at the end of that, you know, whole monologue really... Is good that, for eating, by the way. All oh, men must you. drink. All men must drink. I think something very important that he he says is that you know he dreams of that night, but but not of the sorcerer, right? not of his lost manhood, right? but of the voice. What the fuck? Yeah. What's that voice? That's it's a god, a demon, it's someone, right? That's What's that's that what voice? he says. What's that voice? Look, and, look, I mean, Varys knows everything, and he doesn't know. Yep. So and he knows all the conjurer's tricks. That's something else that he said in there. Uh, what do you think? Here's another question. Uh, it's slightly different. Um, oh, well, I'll skip that one. Go to this one. What does do you think that Varys and Illyrio know Tyrion's bio dad is Aerys Targaryen? Oh, I think he pieced it together. I think I think Varys does. I don't know if Illyrio does, and if. It, if Ilio does, it's only because Vary said, "Hey, yep. I'm sending this guy to you." you know. I think they know. I think they know early on because Vary says something like, uh, "A little man may cast a big shadow." Yeah, and that seems, in retrospect, knowing whatever what we've talked about the dragon X gene and about Tyrion and about the whole possibility of Joanna being raped by King Ares, mm -hmm. um, Vary was his master of whispers. If there was a scurrilous rumor, as the world book says, that Joanna Lannister was his concubine, of course Varys would know that. Yeah, absolutely. So... 100%. He could be putting this together. Maybe he doesn't know with absolute certainty, but he would know the timeline. He would know that Joanna... Had, that this thing happened, and then she left, and then she has a stunted dwarf that's a lot like Queen Rayella's you know, stillborn babies. Like, he would be able to put that together. He's a clever dude. And yeah. so he's talking to Tyrion this whole time, knowing that Tyrion is a miniature dragon. A small man may cast a big shadow, my lord. And they're talking about dragons and all this stuff. I think they must know. That, and I, I think, think he if knows. he knows, then Illyrio knows too. Yeah. The dragon has three heads. Do you think the third head is Tyrion? Who do you think it is? You think it's Daenerys, Aegon, yep. and it doesn't matter to me if he's a black, if Aegon is a Blackfire, or if he's the saved Targaryen baby. It's all the same. They all come from the same line. So how how does Jon Snow fit into that? Oh fuck! You know, Jon Snow is. Uh... Fuck, you're right. Yeah, he's the Winter Rose. He's, he's fire he's and dead ice. anyway. He's dead anyway. Yeah, he's dead. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a Maybe winner. Melisandre cuts Stannis' <laughs> balls off, root and stem, calls to some god, makes blue flame, and Jon Snow pops out. Uh, you know? Speaking of, so uh, Danny sees her dad for the first time in, in trying to get some sound clips for this series or for tonight's show. I ended up listening to a lot of the books today and just making notes. And here's a note that maybe we'll talk about or maybe we won't. Beyond Loom to Cabin of Stone Hall. The largest she had ever seen. The skulls of dead dragons looked down from its walls. Upon a towering bathroom sat an old man in rich robes, an old man with dark eyes and long silvery gray hair. Let him be king over charred bones and cooked meat, he said to a man below him. Let him be the king of ashes. Grogan shrieked, his claws digging through silk and skin. But the king on the throne never heard, and Danny moved on. The series was her first thought. The next time she paused. So that's the first time that she ever sees her dad, Ares, the Mad King, and mm -hmm. she doesn't realize it's him. Isn't that so sad? Like she's looking at all these visions. She doesn't she's know. She's in Carth in the House of the Undead, seeing all these visions, and that's the only time she ever sees her own bio dad, and he's like a mad, insane person in the throne room saying well everything that she's heard from everyone is that he was mad yeah. and he was crazy i mean she, she doesn't know any any yeah. different anyway so yeah. i mean 
And then I, it, this, it starts with, uh, she thought, so she sees the next room and it's got Rhaegar in it. Mm -hmm. And she thinks it's her brother, uh, Viserys for a second, but then she puts it together. But a second glance told her otherwise. The man had her brother's hair, but he was taller. And his eyes were a dark indigo rather than lilac. Aegon, he told a woman, nursing a newborn babe in a great wooden bed. What better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? The woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He oh, is the prince the that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. He looked up when he said it, and his eyes met Danny's. And it seemed as if he saw her standing there beyond the door. There must be one more, he said. Though whether he was speaking to her or the woman in the bed, she could not say. The dragon has three heads. He went to the window seat, picked up a harp, and ran his fingers lightly over its silvery strings. Sweet sadness filled the room as man and wife and babe faded like the morning mist. Only the music lingering behind to speed her on her way. Isn't that so sweet? He gave kind of uh, Rhaegar like an Irish voice there a little bit, he, you know? He gets a little too high-pitched for Rhaegar for me. Because I opinion. think Rhaegar is more like bro -y Well, And just kind of swaggering and... He's you know. a singer, though, so he's probably got a little bit of a higher-pitched yeah. voice, you know? So he can hit the high notes, <laughs> yeah! He's a baritone, you don't know. He could do, like, I mean, sad he could, emo I guess, music. I guess, theoretically, he could he be a bass. Does emo he music. could be, like, Tay Zande and, and sing Chocolate Rain, you know? I don't know Chocolate who that is. Chocolate Rain. I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Kitty, yeah. you've been so good. Welcome she back. Did, she left, so the kitty left our shark toot for a while, and now she's back to... See what there is to be seen. So yeah, so maybe it's Jon Snow, but the dragon has three heads. I'm thinking Jon Snow's doing his thing on the wall, being dead, being a white wolf, and so, it's really Aegon, Danny, and Tyrion. Those are our dragon riders. What do you think? I'm okay with it, but if Aegon is a Blackfire, then that could explain but Blackfires, how... Blackfires, okay, remember know, that the Blackfires come from, from the Targaryens. Targaryens. Yes, I know. They come from Mr. Pure Targaryen, who was the and, son and they of Aegon and they got, the they got and legitimized, Dana, who right? Been a queen. Damon uh, legitimizes yeah. them. Or, so, yeah, Aegon the Unworthy. Darren, but, Darren, yeah, oh, right, but right, right. so the Blackfires come from the Targaryen line. It's all the same. I get that they're, they've been at war for a thousand years, but it's all the same. Even if Queen, um, whatever her name is, with the Dragonite Nares. Even if Queen Nerys and the Dragon Knight were the true parents of uh, of Good King Darren, right. who was the king when the Blackfire rebellions happened, his half brother, uh, even if that's true, they're still brother and sister, so they're still pure Targaryen. So it doesn't really matter all that much, does it? I get that the Blackfires are a big deal. I get so, that. People are super passionate about the Blackfires. Maybe Aegon the Young Griff is a Blackfire. Who cares? Oh, well, here's another question though, Dave. Who is, who do you think Aegon the Young Griff is? Is it a descendant of Illyrios? Why couldn't it actually be Aegon? Well, that's what I'm saying. So, Aegon is one of the possibilities. So, we... <laughs> So we Here's the possibility All right. that I see. Aegon the Young Griff is truly baby Aegon smash head. Yeah. He, or he could be a son, a biological son of Illyrio Mopatis and his beloved wife, Sarah, named S-E-R-R-A, who has golden similar, hair yeah. and blue eyes and that Targaryen look, who, may, who came from Lys, and we know that Sarah and Miguel... You know, Sarah, who yes, they had became, sea smoke. Yes, they were septons. A sheep stealer. Yep. In 96 AC, Sarah, her sister Miguel, dies. So this is about, I'm just trying to source it a little bit. We don't know when this woman went missing, right. this girl went missing. But the two twins, or the two sisters, were sent to the faith. One of them, Miguel, became a septa and dies of grayscale or something or a sickness, a plague, and reconciles her parents, Jaehaerys, and uh, I can never, and good Queen Alysanne. Mm. But the other one flees the mother house, goes to Lys, quote, for a time. This is on 
uh, page 264 of your world book. She goes to there for a time. Uh, how long is the time? A hundred years? A thousand years? And then she ends her days as the proprietor of a famous oh. pleasure house in Old Volantis. Right. So if, she, if this woman, Sarah, S-A-E-R-R-A, -R -R -A, was the great-grandmother of Illyrio Mopatis's wife, yeah. then she could be a Targaryen baby. They could have a Targaryen baby who's Aegon that they do the old switcheroo when baby Aegon gets smashed head and then they just insert Illyrio's kid for right. that other kid. Right, 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 right. So like that's the general theory. I don't know if they or it could be through the the actual like bitter steel blackfire uh Damon Targaryen descendants. The point is we don't there's not enough information for us to know. Here's a couple of places this kid could come from or he could just be the kid that they say he is. And you know what? In the end, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same family. Have we ever seen Varys lie? All the time. We see him lie all the time. Do we actually see him lie, though? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Because we know that he... Yeah. ...mixes and has secrets, but do yeah. we ever actually see him straight up tell a lie? He says to Tyrion stuff about, like, Tyrion wants to hide Shay. Yeah. And when... Uh, you know, when Tyrion's like, well, if my sister asks, you're going to tell her such and such. And he goes, no, if your sister asks, I'm going to tell her that Shay is a whore you met on the Green Fork and brought to King's Landing against your father's wishes. Uh, if I stop being valuable to Cersei, she'll stop using me. Uh, and also, Tyrion, you're being an idiot about this girl. Um, That's not a lie, though. No. No. Uh, he more manipulates, right? Like, he more pulls yeah. strings. He's more of a well, puppet. Or the juggler. reason why I ask that is because here we have Varys yeah. straight up telling you. Yeah. Yeah, I switched the babies. Oh, yeah. You know? He's, oh, I see where you're going with that He's now. straight up saying, yeah, yeah that's, that's Aegon. That's the reason yeah. why I'm doing this. And, and you know, on top of that, yeah. we see him say that with Dar uh, Daenerys and... Yeah. And uh, Viserys. And even if this kid is a Blackfire, and it really, it honestly doesn't matter. It doesn't to me matter. If he is. Yeah, it doesn't like, matter. I don't, if he's Illyrio's kid, that explains why Illyrio feels so parentally like fond of him. He wants yeah. to send him candied ginger or something, you know. Like, and he was hoping to catch a, a glimpse of young Griff when he bids Tyrion farewell, um, and doesn't get it. And so there's like a little bit of you know, proud uncle, proud dad. Some sort of familial connection. Well, there. I think he was. I mean, before Young Griff sets out on the journey, does he live with Illyrio his whole life? I don't know. Because I mean, we we know Var says you know he knows what it's like to be yep. hungry. He knows what it's like to yep. fish and all that stuff. But if he's living with Illyrio, he wouldn't need for all of that because Illyrio is motherfucking no, rich. No, but I think that was their whole point, right? Was to create like if they had. If it's Illyrio's son, it doesn't really make sense. You're right. Then he would raise him as his own son. Yeah. But maybe he wants his son to be king of Westeros, so he raises him as no, a king. No, that's, that's, I think, a little... I think that's too far it for me. I think to me as well. I think it's legit Aegon. Okay. And, uh, and yeah. Listen to this. That's my... Okay. That's my opinion. Game of Thrones, Arya chapter, page 288... Okay, early on, she has been chasing that black cat. Yes. That was actually Rainey's. In King's Lair. Do you know uh, Princess Rainey's who gets raped by Gregor Clegane? She had a black kitten that she named Balerion, the Black Dread. Uh, Varys is talking to Tyrion about this much later. I think that the one-eared tomcat, that black, vicious tomcat yeah. that Arya is trying to catch... Is Balerion. Is Balerion. Do we think that she that he's ward or some sort? Mm. You know, he seems uh, to be no. more cunning and faster yeah, than all the other he does. cats. He does. You know. Well, and and it's it's part of a chapter where uh, Varys says something like, "Well, when uh, Gregor Clegane and Amory Lorch uh, scaled the walls to Megor's Holdfast, uh, I think they taught." Rainy is the difference between, you know, a, what a kitten is and what a dragon is, you know, this sort of thing. Gotcha. And again, that it's rooted in Varya's protection 
of the children. kids. Yeah. yeah. Like, he really cares about kids and orphans, and why shouldn't he? He was so traumatized. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, this is Aria listening to uh, Varys and Illyrio, way back in Game of Thrones, page 288 in the hardcover. Illyrio is in King's Landing? Yeah. They're underneath, so she's escaping. Oh, yes. Well, do we don't now? know that it's Illyrio, but do we later put it together? Or? From somewhere far below, she heard noises. The scrape of boots and the distant sound of voices. Mm-hmm. A flickering light brushed the wall ever so faintly, and she saw that she stood at the top of a great black well, a shaft uh, 20 feet across, plunging deep into the earth. Huge stones had been set into the curving walls as steps, circling down and down, dark as the steps to hell that old Nan used to tell of them. And something was coming out of the darkness, out of the bowels of the earth. Uh, And then so she can hear voices echoing up the shaft. I found one bastard, one said, the rest will come soon, a day, two days, a fortnight. And when he learns the truth, what will he do? A second voice asked in the liquid accents of the free cities. So it's Varys, the and first Lario. talker, it's and Lyrio. It's gotta be, yeah. And they're talking so about Gendry. They f- they're talking about Gendry and Robert Baratheon's bastards. bastards yeah. Um, and Arya doesn't understand any of this, and neither do we At on the first point. time through, because yeah. we don't know any of this Yeah, yet. we don't know anything. And when he learns the truth, what will he do? They're talking about Ned trying to find the bastards. Of course. The gods alone know. The first voice said, Arya could see a wisp of gray smoke drifting up off the torch, writhing like a snake as it rose. The fools tried to kill his son, and what's worse, Bran, and what's worse, they made a mummer's farce of it. He's not a man to put that aside. I warn you, the wolf and the lion will soon be at each other's throats, whether we will it or no. Too soon, too soon, the voice with the accent complained. What good is war now? We're not ready. Delay. As well bid me stop time. Do you take me for a wizard? The other chuckled, no less. (laughs) Flames licked at the cold air. The tall shadows were almost on top of her. An instant later, you know, she describes them. He's wearing like a army man's outfit. Uh, What would you have me do? The torchbearer asked. A stout man in a leather half cape. An army man's outfit? What are we like like wearing like camo? Camo flak yeah. jacket yeah. and, and AK forty seven AK forty seven on his back. Yeah, some what, claymores. Yeah, what, what is this? <laughs> Couple grenades. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. That's exactly how I want you to picture. All this. right. That's, I'm picturing yeah. Illyrio wearing exactly. fucking yeah. United uh, States Marine yeah. camouflage active duty wear. Okay. And good. then uh, that all he right. wore mail over boiled leather and a dirk and a short sword in his belt. It seemed to Arya that there was something oddly familiar about him. See, even she can see through the disguises a little bit. She yeah. recognizes Varys. If one hand can die, why not a second, replied the man with the accent and the forked yellow beard. You have danced the dance before, my friend. He was no one that Arya had ever seen before. She was certain of that. Grossly fat, yet he seemed to walk lightly, carrying his weight on the balls of his feet oh, as a water dancer It's might. absolutely Illyrio. Yeah. I mean, what His even rings question? glimmered in the torchlight, red gold and pale silver, crusted with rubies, sapphires, slitted yellow tiger eyes. Every finger wore a ring. Some had two. Before is not now, and this hand is not the other, the scarred man said as they stepped into the hall. Perhaps so, the forked beard replied, pausing to catch his breath after the long climb. Nonetheless, we must have time. The princess is with child. The Kal will not bestir himself until his son is born. You know how they are, these savages. The man with the torch pushed something, and Arya heard a deep rumbling. If he does not bestir himself soon, it may be too late, the stout man in the steel cap said. This is no longer a game for two players, if ever it was. Stannis Baratheon and Lysa Arryn have fled beyond my reach, and the whispers say they're gathering swords around them. The Knight of Flowers writes Highgarden, urging his lord father to send his sister to court. The maid is a girl of fourteen, sweet and beautiful and tractable, and Lord Renly and Sir Loras intend that Robert should bed her, wed her, and make her a new queen. Littlefinger, the gods only know what game Littlefinger is playing. Yet Lord Stark's the one who troubles my sleep. He has the bastard and the book, and soon enough he'll have the truth. And now his wife has abducted Tyrion Lannister, thanks to Littlefinger's meddling. 
Lord Tywin will take that for an outrage, and Jaime has a queer affection for the imp. If the Lannisters move north, that will bring the Tullys in as well. Delay, you say. Make haste, I reply. Even the finest of jugglers cannot keep a hundred balls in the airs forever. In the air forever. You're more than a jungler, old friend. You are a true sorcerer. All I ask is that you work your magic a while longer. So what does this tell us, Dave? What does this tell us? He it, knows Ned is about to find out the truth about the bastards. Yeah. But he's going about protecting the bastards. He's the one, Vars is the one that sends Gendry away and out of the Queen's grasp. Because then he's with Yorin and those gold cloaks ride up and they so say, give us the boy because we're going to kill him because Cersei's trying to kill all the bastards. Yeah, so do you think he's trying to protect them or do you think he's doing it's it for the good of the realm? Him. It's got to serve it's him. It's got to serve him somehow, right? Okay, idea. He wants Robert to stay in power until Aegon is ready to claim the throne. Yes. Then he wants to say, Robert, your wife has cuckolded you. These three children are not your children. Here are your bastards. Let's pair them up one after the other. Anytime the gold and the stag come together, all your kids are blue eyed with black hair. And so Cersei's a brother fucker. Let's kill these kids and put the real king on the throne. You're done. Or move him out of the way somewhere. But who's who's the real king then? One of his bastards? Aegon. Or it Aegon? Would be Aegon, right? Because all the bastards are not actually of Robert's blood, and he needs Robert's bastards to prove that. Right. So maybe he's trying to sit on that deck of cards until he can use them but if ned gets there first which he does yeah and then he spoils it with his honor which he does yeah and cersei doesn't acquiesce which she does <laughs> then and here we are so i think he's trying to keep peace right it seems to me he's trying to keep peace until aegon comes of age to rule yeah and at this point he's let's if he's 14 now or 15 now he's only 12 then but Illyrio is yeah. talking about the princess. Yeah, the call. He needs... So Illyrio wants the, the, the Dothraki to come over. Yeah. You're right. But it's not the princess he cares about. It's the call. The call won't bestir himself until his son is born. Daenerys is still an afterthought at this point. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think the way they put that together is clearly... Uh, yeah, she's, she's with child. Who yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah. Because she call, hasn't done any of this stuff. Because Khal Drogo dies, and then she becomes Aegon the Conqueror, yeah, and then, getting all the Unsullied, making uh, Young Kai bend the knee, yeah. just blood and fire. Or her dragons. She hasn't birthed her dra dragons. Yeah, yet. she hasn't hatched her dragons yet. So yeah. Illyria would have never given away Tatters, uh, eggs, and stash of weed if he knew she yeah, was going right. to hatch the dragon. Right, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think. I don't know. I feel like Varys, uh, clearly he's conspiring at something. It's definitely the Iron Throne. It's yeah. not to seat himself there. It's to seat Aegon there. Because he thinks, he's pretty clear, that's the last passage that we have at the end of Dance of Dragons. Yeah. And that's Varys laying it out for us. This is what I think. So let's let's tie our Varys thoughts up in a nice yeah. bow. Yeah. Right? And then yep. we'll get to some special events that we have to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have okay. a winner of our... Of our contest. Yeah. So, okay, let's wrap yep. up Vars real quick. Is there anything we didn't cover? I uh, mean, we're not going to have answers because George hasn't given us answers, but... Yeah, and uh, we may may or may not get right answers from the series. Do you think so, that Illyrio and Vars know about Tyrion's birth? Yes. I agree. I think they know. I think they know, too. I, I think, think they know, and I think as he's risen to power, so things are changing between book one and book five. Yeah, which is and I def and I absolutely think that their opinions change. By yeah, the end, Varys holds the imp in really high esteem. Oh, huge! I think there's a huge respect for the imp, and I think I agree. I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, Varys even comments on it like you're a great leader type of thing, and, yep, yeah. and he makes some you know they make some comment. I yeah. wasn't leading or yeah, something the, like that, the, but. When he's talking with Illyrio, in what I think, if you guys are going to reread some conversations, do yourself a favor, Dance with Dragons, that palanquin scene is so yeah. good. It works on so many levels. He bites the egg in half, Dave. He bit the egg in half. There's another part where he eats an entire baby starling or something, like a fried bird, yeah. bones and all, 
Illyrio eats the whole fucking thing, and it's so gruesome and awesome. <laughs> like, bones and all, crunch, And we crunch, de crunch. decimated our shark tooths. Yeah, just like oh, we did. Man. If only I had uh, deep-fried a starling or Should something. we take an after-picture of our shark <laughs> tooths, too? Just crumbs. Yeah. Just crumbs. empty grape stem. <laughs> five pine nuts. Yeah, oh, a man. A sad-looking grape. Oh, poor grape. The only remaining strip, a half a strip of uh, prosciutto. prosciutto. <laughs> we did a good job, man. Oh, oh my god. That's okay, yep. we're continuing wrap up Vars. Yeah. So he, they know about. Uh, okay, let's hit the major one. Yep. Is he a Targaryen? Is Aegon? No, is Vars a Targaryen? I absolutely think so. I think he absolutely is. I'd like to know the color of his eyes, but it seems to me that's the only explanation that makes sense for why that blood sacrifice ceremony happened. Yeah. I think he's a Targaryen, or he's the blood of the dragon. Let's just say he's the blood of the dragon, because I yeah. don't care if he's a child of Aryan Bright Flame. I don't care if he's a black fire. He's got an XG. He's got the blood <laughs> of the dragon. That's the thing. Yeah. And I think he's probably got bright gold hair. Uh, the Targaryen look, yeah. and I think that's why this sadistic sorcerer cut him off root and stem, and he could still feel it. It dulled none of his senses, and he was, and he resolved to survive. Like Varys is a survivor, yeah. and he says something really funny at one point. I'm a survivor. I'm yeah. not gonna give up. <laughs> I'm a survivor. Keep on surviving. Uh, 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 uh. That's what Vars is singing right now, yeah. you know? That's what he does, man. He says something like, uh... I ain't got a fucking penis, but I'm gonna <laughs> live my life as though I got one. And he says something to Tyrion like, uh, um, oh, is that the way of it, my lord? A man may have wits, or he may have a bit of meat between his legs, but yeah. not both. Yeah. Because Tyrion's being an idiot about Shay, and he doesn't see her for what she is. Um, the, uh... The other thing he says is, uh, can't you can't believe find I just me. sang on the podcast. That this was is, great. This is wine drunk. This is, yeah, cheers. This is wine drunk, Dave. Awesome. Oh, man, was if great. I drink anymore, I'll be crying, you know, later. Aww. You know, we'll put on some Celine Dion. She had a rough week. Oh, oh let's, not uh, go. let's not go there. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. Yeah, oh, and he says that uh, you'll find that the somebody who sings and swims, and I just keep right on paddling. Yeah. Oh, he's so good. He has such great one-liners. There's so many good quotes. Go to Wikipedia. Yeah. Do they type have in Vari's. They have a fucking uh, ton of his quotes. And I just keep just like, my lord. You know, they just keep going. Yeah. Okay, let's end this podcast yeah. on a happy note. Yes, please. We have a Victor oh, yeah. in our uh, in our podcast giveaway, which was, by the yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Last make a drink. Take a picture and send it to us. Yeah, this and, is uh, our shaker. And so we have a we have a all men must drink shaker that yep. we're gonna send out. One of the rare six, the only six in creation, uh, and we're sending one of them out. You have one, I have one, and so lucky number three is being sent out to Jake the Snake Roberts now. Jake. Jake the Snake. That's yeah. what you came up with? Yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts. Did you ever watch wrestling in the 80s? Yeah. yeah. No, not in the 80s. I was oh. born in 89. So. Oh, that hurts me, Dave. Yeah. I did watch that WWF, though, back yeah. when it was WWF, yeah. and then they got yeah. sued yeah. by the World Wildlife, Wildlife Foundation. Federal Foundation. Yeah, Yeah. Jake the Snake Roberts was my favorite. He was a wrestler in the 80s that would put a giant python. He would stun guys and, you know, I really liked, pile drive. I really liked Rashiki. Did like you watch big... when Rashiki was no. big? He's this really big fat you know hawaiian <laughs> dude and he would get you no, in a corner man. and sit you down at the ropes yeah. and then he'd you know he would always wear like a sumo wrestler's yeah. outfit so his big ass was hanging out oh. and he would, he would put them up against the ropes oh, and no. he would just be like boh, boh, sumo, and, sumo and, and 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 back his ass <laughs> up into their face and just rub his ass in their oh. face yeah rashiki rashiki oh no man macho man yeah. randy savage was oh, my enemy okay. Macho Man Randy Savage. I love good. the Hulk. Triple love, H, The I, Rock. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is it, Heart? Uh, what's the Triple H? I don't yeah, remember da, 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 what it was stand for, but oh, Triple H and this. then The Rock. Triple H was the evil guy. Yeah. He stole Vince Undertaker, McMahon's. Oh, no, the Undertaker. Undertaker. The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. Mike Foley. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt. Yeah. I love that, man. Stone Cold, it. Steve Austin. Okay, let's okay. back back okay. to Jake. Yep. Jake the Snake Roberts. We have to come up with a uh, Jake Master Jake, of Whispers. The, the Jake the Worthy? Jake. Jake the Worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy yeah. of the gift. He's Jake. Uh, Grand, Jake. Grandmaster Jake. 
Grand listener, Jake. Grand listener. Eh. Only listener, Jake. <laughs> we'll have to have him on the podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working out some issues Let's with get getting... get him on the podcast. He's multiple, a winner. Multiple uh, we need input more sources working. You know, oh, Lady uh, Lady Gwen was supposed to be here, but her palanquin is not here was yet. lost in the Mountains of the Moon. She was yeah. here. She was on her way down to us from Boston to explain Varys to us uh, for tonight's episode. Last raven we got was she was derailed in the Mountains of the Moon or the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. yeah. Some mountain clan must yeah. have raided her palanquin. Yeah, it was I, a very I believe she's a survivor, desperate. though, yeah. so I think we're going to hear from her She's again. a survivor, <laughs> not going to go give up. Palanquin go raided. I scrambled off in. Okay. You're, um, you're down a register. You're a little I bit I moved large. down. I moved yeah. down. Yeah. I didn't want to go home. <laughs> anyway, okay. So Jake won the shaker. Jake won the shaker. We're going to send it to him and yep. get him on the podcast yep. and everything. And yep. uh, We have no other contests for today. Stay nothing. tuned. There are three more shakers that I may just keep or I may just send off. Maybe we'll do another contest. Maybe um, we should send someone some charcuteries. Tweet them. We're not going to ship actual food or beverages. Because that could get people sick. I think it's illegal to ship alcohol. Is it? I no, think it is. No, it isn't. Not if you're 21 plus. You probably just have to be on premises to sign for it and prove that you're of legal drinking age. I think, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to ship alcohol. It's not. I uh, I got a very fancy bottle of Pinot Noir yeah. from the Willamette Valley uh, in Oregon, which but makes did you it buy delightful. It from I bought a... it online and they shipped it to me. But did you buy it directly from the, the valley, you know, the orchard vineyard mm-hmm. or whatever? Did you buy it from a distributor? You didn't yeah, buy it from probably. a person. No, I so, bought it from a third party. Yeah, so there was a oh. distributor involved who has a license to distribute. Why would we court such legal tenuousness on our podcast? All I want to do is send people a shaker. All so I they want can make to do is have drinks. some fun. Oh, God, you just can't I'm, stop. I can't it's like stop. a playlist. It's I like can't your, stop. It's like a Dave playlist. <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Gotta make the booty drop. I okay. Like- uh Oh, we won't stop? Is that a Miley Cyrus song, too? I have no, no we won't stop. No, I don't know, dude. You're younger yeah. than me. You yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a Miley Cyrus song. Oh, my God. We got to stop. All right. Wee! Don't drag me I've, into that. I've got to stop. Anyway, <laughs> ladies so and gentlemen. Jake won our contest. Jake won our contest. Thank you very much for listening and posting. Yeah, thank send you. Send us your thoughts on Varys. Thank you for listening to Varys. Everyone, yeah. please send in your thoughts about Varys. Yeah. Oh, take a picture of your charcuteries. Take a picture of your charcuteries. Show us what kind of cheese plate you guys yeah. put together. Go to Tana Ford Designs if you want to see and, pictures uh, of our charcuterie before we destroyed it. And follow at Tana Ford and at Wari, yes. uh, W4RRI, and we will uh, yeah, we will post us. pictures there too. Yeah, that's let's us. just post the pictures there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to, what is this, episode 15? 15. Episode 15. Nice. Of our podcast. One and five. We have to end this yeah. the only way we know how. Hey, Dave. Tana. All men. Must drink. Good night, everyone. <laughs>